Greetings everyone. On the bench today is another amplifier to review. Still new in this little baggie. Bought this back in May. It's been sitting around. I had all those other amp reviews. This is the last in this batch of amplifier tests. And when I'm done, I'm going to shoot a video and I put it up sometime later. You know, we'll... Uh, Kind of mix things up a little bit of all of the amps that I tested so far which ones are the best so anyway this is a uh, like I say a TPA 3116 D2 it's a mono amplifier I bought it off of eBay you can get them in the six or seven dollar range and the other TPA 3116 amps were pretty good one required modification to make it good, but well, let's see how this thing is. So I will break the seal. And here it is. We have nice size coils, output filter chokes, capacitors, supply bypass, probably. It's got a Input level control, input power and output. Has the uh, these green type of connectors, which they seem to be a lot better than those blue ones. Nothing going on on the back. Seems to have a decent size heat sink. It's only one channel, so uh, hopefully it doesn't get too hot. We'll check it all out. Okay, so the first order of business is hook it up and give it a listening test. Okay, it's all hooked up to power, running it at 16 volts. Sitting idle, it only draws 30 milliamps. That's pretty nice. I uh, got the music player going here. Let's give it a quick listen. Sounds pretty good to me. Another thing I like about it is put the microphones down by the tweeter. The uh, idle hiss is very low, so that is excellent. If you watch my videos, you know in the past I've tested a lot of these amplifiers and these Class D amps, and they have a lot of hiss to them. But these uh, TPA 3116 amp boards seem to be pretty quiet, so that is good. Another thing I tested is low volume distortion and the PAM 8610 I believe it is uh, had a couple of those boards and they had a lot of distortion at low volume and this seems clean. So far so good. Move on to the power distortion and frequency response tests. All the good stuff. Okay I have it hooked up to the load resistor here 8 ohms and what I'll do is get one power measurement on camera and I'll get the rest off camera and present them at the end and I'll go through the um, frequency response and distortion tests not in that order but we will get it all down here okay let's get this going let's see if I can adjust Okay, there's clipping. It's got a little bit of hang on, as you can see. See how it's kind of squared off at the tailing edge of the peak there? That might introduce a little bit of harshness to the clipping. But uh, you normally don't want to be clipping. So we'll back that out to get a clean power measurement. And I'm using this IF tool, the metal screwdriver gives me some interference okay I think I got it as clean as I can 9.9 .9 volts RMS so we square that and divide it by 8 
and we're getting 12.25 watts and we're running at 16 volts supply so that is doing pretty good so I'll move on with the distortion test and uh, like I say we'll finish up and come back with everything else okay we're taking a look at distortion now and uh, let me adjust this okay there's clipping so you get all those harmonic peaks I'll tune that back and we're looking at a very clean amplifier there's no peaks now this is the if you watch my channel of course you know that this is the uh, pilot signal that's built into the source and it's at one percent of the fundamental just as a reference so the amplifier is clean at one kilohertz let's take a look at some other frequencies looking at 20 hertz now and it's pretty clean of course the updating is slow on the scope because the frequency is so low okay I'm running the frequency sweep here as you can see it's increasing it's at about 10 kilohertz and it's doing pretty good there's tiny little nodes there and there's one growing a little bit usually that's because of the uh, type of ferrite coils they use you'll get some harmonics there is no pilot signal in this part of the example you gotta turn that up a little bit oh, it just recycled well distortion's not too bad at higher frequencies there's a small node but I really doubt that would be audible okay we'll take a look at the frequency response okay frequency response at 15 Hertz coming up to 20 right there the signal should be at this graticule which it pretty much is it's just ever so shy of that at 20 Hertz so it's like a fraction of a, a DB looks like this amp is going to be pretty flat we will check though at higher frequencies as well okay 20 to 20 kilohertz signal let that ramp up like I always say my music player the signal tends to breathe up and down a little bit throughout this test nothing to do with the amplifier okay it recycled frequency response is excellent on this amp nice and flat through the audible range 20 to 20 kilohertz here are the results of the power measurement this column is the supply voltage this is the 8 ohm load column and the 4 ohm load column of course these showing the watts this is all pre-clipping power so you know it's a clean signal without any distortion so with the supply voltage of 9 volts at 8 ohms it put out 3.5 watts 12, 6.7, 14, 9.3, 16, 12.3, 18, 15.6, 20, 19 and a half, 22, 24 and a half, 24 volts put out a respectable 28.1 watts. And for the 4 ohm loads, 9 volts it did 6.3, 12 it did 12.3, 14, 17.1, 16, 21.9, 18, 28.6, 20, 34.8, 22, 45.6, and look at this, 24 volts, 4 ohm loads, we got 51.8 watt. So we broke that 50 watt barrier. Like I mentioned before, idle current was 30 milliamps, which is very good for battery use. And the amplifier ran down to 6 volts. 
It's actually cut out at 5, so I would say 6 volts is a good minimum. Not a lot of power you're going to get at 6 volts, so I didn't include it here. But it just shows you how versatile the amplifier is. You know, if you want to run it at 9 volts, you, know, you get a reasonable amount of power. Or if you need more power, you can run it at 12 or 16. And of course, you can go for broke and get some really decent power at 24 volts and um, 4 ohm or even 8 ohm loads. The heat sink is very good. With a continuous signal at 4 ohms at the maximum supply voltage of 24, you know, it's starting to get pretty warm though. But, you know, that's a continuous signal. I would think you would be fine with a music signal since it's not, you know, 100% the whole time. So overall, it's an impressive little board. Delivers the power without overheating. Low hiss at idle. Uh, no low signal level distortion. And, you know, as you saw in the other test, it performed pretty well. I would highly recommend this board you know if you watch my channel I always have something to complain about but nothing serious just those minor quibbles I mentioned earlier but it's a very good board I would strongly recommend this get a couple of them and make a stereo amplifier out of it well that's it thanks for watching